is this? Uh, it's Brooke. I'm at the office, I'm working late, and I thought maybe I would stop by on my way home. Trevor, are you okay? Yeah, actually, I was just uh, thinking of drowning myself in some tequila here. No, 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 don't touch the tequila, all right? You have any ideas in the way of food? How about uh, salt and limes? Uh-huh. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Tacos, how's that? Gracias, muchacha. Hey, you want some? Hmm? I brought sodas. Oh, Dean thinks of everything. Yes, yes. So, oh, how do men live the way they do? What I want right now is a big, smelly cigar. You got one, you? Oh. Yeah? Jeez, I'm afraid I'm all out. Well, you see you. Hey, you better have been to Mexico. Yeah. Yeah, did you like it? Sure. Yeah, great people. They really know how to live, don't they? You homesick for Mexico, Trevor? Yeah, in Margaritaville. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, life is a pain, isn't it? You know what I think? I think when one door closes, another door opens. Yeah, well, it's official. Matt is going to become Mrs. Dimitri Merrick. Oh. Yep. Over finito basta così. What do they say? Irreconcilable differences? Well, I say it's chickening out and quitting. That's what. I've been there. Yeah, it stinks. Yeah, it does stink. It stinks a lot. You know what you have to do? You have to... You have to dig around in it. You have to get into it, and you have to find out what's good about it. You have to find out what sort of a lesson you're learning from the experience, because then you can take that knowledge and you can make your life better. You know what I'm saying? No. But I can tell Pollyanna is on the warpath here. Did you, they get, did you get, they get you hot sauce with that? Mm. I think that there's a purpose to making mistakes. I mean, especially relationship mistakes. I think that that purpose is to learn. I mean, because if we don't learn, otherwise we're going to do the same stupid things over and over again, same stupid habits. I mean, you know, life, life is long. I mean, why should we make the same horrible mistake the second time when we could make a brand new one? Sorry I ever brought Pollyanna up. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm getting at? What I understand is that I am looking at the big, empty hole that my life once was. Yes, I've looked at that hole a number of times. And I tell you what, I think the latest was when Jack decided to make the brilliant decision to hook on to Erica again. That was a real bright spot. <laughs> but you know what? It's water over the dam. And it hurts a lot less. One word about time heals all. I'm giving you a hot sauce shampoo. Do I look that dumb? Mm-hmm. You're gonna be okay. No, it's not just that. I know that. I know it's the baby. No, it's not just the baby. It's Janet. And the more I make nicey nice to Janet, the more I get nutsy nuts like Janet. I'm serious. I give her a sideways glance, she goes cuckoo. It's like, it's like I gotta walk around on eggshells and ballet slippers. That's what the doc said. It's either that or she's gonna have another acute hypoglycemic attack or whatever and then lose the baby. I know, you're in a, you're in a very tough position. Yeah, I promise to be nice and nice, but someday soon, pow, right in the kitchen. Well, how often do you have to visit? Are you kidding me? Janet's not gonna be happy until I move into that cell with her. Well, your visits can be short. Yeah. And one minute is like an hour. Oh, and you got to see this now. Janet's talking to the baby. Amanda, why don't you tell Daddy how, how wonderful and noble he is? It makes me want a gag. Does Dr. Tolan think that she's making any progress? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Janet's getting sicker and sicker, believe me. You know what, Trevor? We'll always have the comfort of knowing that you're doing right by this baby. Yeah, oh, sure. You will. All right? And you'll know that when you see your, your, your son or your daughter, when you see that child and you feel that love and you have that connection, it's worth everything. And if you think I'm exaggerating, you just ask any parent. A parent, that's what I wanted to be. And you're going to be a good one. Except I wanted Nat as the mom. I know you miss her like my left leg was lopped off. Her and Merrick will be having a kid soon. 
Trevor, don't torture yourself. Please. Yeah. You see now. Anastasia. Oh, Anastasia. Don't. Okay. Every time I close my eyes, Brooke, I see them. Driving me nuts. I always thought Natalie and I were forever. Ah, yes, Miss English. This is Dimitri Merrick. I, uh... uh... I hope I'm not calling too early. What can I do for you? Well, I've given second thought to, uh, your idea about, uh, a profile for Temple Magazine. If you're still interested, I'll gladly speak on the, on the record. Well, this is, uh, quite a change of heart. Well, if I was curt to you before, I, I do apologize. Would this have anything to do with your engagement to, uh, a friend of mine? Well, Natalie and I would both welcome a chance to uh, clear the air. When? Today? Right now, if you want. Uh, why is it that all of a sudden you're interested in, uh, in talking? Well, my, uh, sincere desire to fit into the community. I, I want people to understand who I am and to prove that I have nothing to hide. Are you free for breakfast? Yes, I'll be there as soon as I can. Oh, well, I look forward to seeing you. Bye. Goodbye, Brooke. Bye. Yes, hi. I'm Brooke English. I believe Mr. Merrick is expecting me. Please, wait in here. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me, Mr. Merrick. There's somebody at the door. Is it, uh, Brooke English? Yes. Oh, sure. Right in. Please, come in. Oh, thank you. May I take your coat? Yes, thank you. Brooke, welcome. Hello, Dimitri. I have uh, some coffee or a juice. Sabrina, would you bring us some breakfast, please? Please, Brooke, sit down. Thank you. Your estate is uh, quite impressive. I mean, what you can see from the drive, the grounds are very beautiful. Well, we have a devoted gardening staff. Well, it shows. Here you are. Thank you. I thought Natalie would uh, be joining us. Oh, she's with her son. So, uh, where do we begin? Well, since we're basically doing a profile, I think we should begin with your background. I've read, uh, most of the sort of scarce research that's been published on your life, so I have a fairly general idea about your family, your education, some of your business associations. Um, I will be recording this. Well, I have no problem with that. My life is an open book. Everything you say will be on record. Everything. And luckily, I have nothing to hide. As I told Natalie, uh, Angelique did not want to ride. I made her. I pushed, sulked, pestered her until she finally gave in. I was young, I was spoiled, I thought the world was my playground. I was used to leading, and Angelique was used to humoring me. I did not know that she was pregnant. Your wife was pregnant? Yes. After the accident, the first thing that the doctor said to me was, I'm sorry. We couldn't save the child. I'm sorry. I held myself responsible, and for 15 years I've lived with that guilt. And, and now? Well, now, finally, I have come to terms with it. The, the pain is gone. You've forgiven yourself. Well, in great measure, because of Helga, my former governor. Angelique's mother. Yeah, she helped me keep my head above water and, until Natalie came along. I guess it's understandable, then, why you dropped out of sight for such a long time. Well, I was haunted by guilt and self-hatred. And over time, I've... Well, I've been able to hel uh, hate myself a little less. I've learned that my whole life doesn't have to be a punishment. Uh, excuse me, Brooke. Um, what are you doing? I don't have any desire to make your suffering public. Uh, I, I want you to. I have nothing to hide. You see, preventing ugly rumors before they start can only be accomplished by telling the whole truth. Now, you... 
as a, a journalist, should know that. A profile reveals a subject's character, doesn't it? Oh, this is how my character was formed, through suffering we learn, truth me is for knowledge. Excuse me Mr. Mag, but a fax just came into your office, and I think it was the one you were waiting for. Oh, thank you, Sabrina. Now, this is probably going to take five or ten minutes. Oh, I have enough, really. I appreciate your time. You were more than generous, and... Um, I'll let myself out if that's okay. May I use your phone before I leave? Well, by all means, and uh, I enjoyed our conversation. Yes, so did I. Thank you again. Uh, please, print every word. Post in about five minutes. What's going on? Support, all right? Five minutes? I'll be there. I did back off last night. I and mean, I was yelling at Dimitri to stay away from Janet. We were about to duke it out, and then he, he quit. Why? Well, I was telling him his threats against Janet. It was stupid. He could, she could lose the baby. A miscarriage. That would follow why he quit. Holy, holy. I mean, what if he is a human being after all? I don't know. What? What do you mean? You, 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 it just you killed grow the guy. He spilled his guts. He did a snow job on add him? Up. Why? He was very warm. He was very open. It sounded like it was rehearsed. Rehearsed? Look, it's hard to explain, all right? I just, I got this impression as though he were trying to, to get press agents. Well, he wants you in his camp. I mean, he hired Mimi. Yes, it's like he's giving me a little piece of uh, personal information as a, as a payoff. What, a little personal tidbit in exchange for what? Exactly, for what? All these years of silence, and all of a sudden, he wants everything on record. Weird. It's not weird. Not if... If what? Not if he's dusting off one big secret because he's trying to cover another one that's far more serious. Does that make any sense what to you? What is this other big oh. secret, Brooke? Whatever it is, it's the missing piece. <laughs> Speaking of missing pieces, 